Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today we're talking about the newly revealed Drake Ironclad. It's a big, heavily armoured freighter. We're also going to be talking about the Anvil Hornet Mark 1 series being retired, both from the RSI website in the form of sales and from in-game shops. And what does that mean? Because it will still be available to obtain some ways, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So, let's start with the Drake Ironclad. Ironclad. So this is a big old concept six-person armored freighter, much larger than the Caterpillar. Most of the ship is a cargo bay. It has this huge front ramp, so it allows cargo on and off and ground vehicles on and off, but also a retractable roof so that you can do a load of cargo management in space with EVA and uh, sort of has tractor beam access. So the cargo is protected. It's got a protected cargo bay you can choose when to take the roof off and it's well armored and has a lot more weaponry than say a caterpillar it's got loads of engines it's drake it's no frills it's very brutalist looking there are three main areas of the ship the rear third of the ship is for the crew accommodation and engineering and then the front two thirds of the ship are the cargo bay section Sort of at the top of the ship, there's the command module, which serves as a cockpit and an escape pod for the ship. This should only be detached in an emergency, though. It's not supposed to sort of like just be casually detached as a little scout ship or anything. It's a, oh god, I need to get out of here. I need to jettison my cargo. I want to live. The command module will also be a thing on ships like the Caterpillar. They are building towards that. There are three main entrances to the ship. One from the command module. There's a uh, another one on the opposite side of the ship with the docking collar airlock and then there's also the big ramp at the front. At the rear of the ship there's the main engineering area, above that's the habitation area. Coming to the upper center of the ship that's the command deck which has an overview of the cargo and tractor beam operation but it can't fly the ship. The ship's dealt with with the command module, that sort of detachable module is, is a separate Thing. At the back of the cargo, there's also a sort of like a covered area. This is suitable for logistics equipment storage and ground vehicle storage for smaller ground vehicles. And then you're into the sort of main cargo hold of the ship, which is most of the ship. There are long gantries each side of that as well that run the ship's entire length. At the front of the ship, there's a raised secure cargo area as well, where there are individual cages for valuable cargo being able to be stored here but sort of like in a much smaller volume at the very front of the ship there's also access to turret and uh, tractor beam turret as well the massive cargo space ramp and retractable roof as well as useful tractor beams allow that sort of ship to be used as a hangar or norm up cargo vessels cargo really quickly and easily it's sort of like a focused storage area that you can use for lots of different things but obviously most people are going to use it for cargo some people are going to use it as a hangar bay for sort of like a a mini carrier cig are exploring a military variant of the ship as well at the moment so currently they've deemed that this military version a ironclad assault the ship is designed to help support ground assaults. It's got more turrets covering the upper and lower sections so it can shoot to the ground as it's flying around. The front section has been converted to allow easier storage and deployment of Nova tanks and other large combat vehicles. The cargo bay is smaller though to accommodate an onboard repair facility for vehicles. CIG roughly talked about the progression of the cargo role and career. Like you'd start with a uh, entry level hull A and you might like move on to a hull B or whatever, but then you'd naturally move on to sort of the caterpillar, which is like the next big step. And then beyond that, you'd move on to like an ironclad. And then you're moving on to something like if you want to do dedicated cargo, the hull C. And then the sort of big ones, the hull D, E and Kraken. Now, obviously, that was sort of an off the cuff evolution of cargo progress comment from CIG because there's a load of other cargo ships within that and lots of other ones like the Banu Merchantmen that do um, trade and cargo and lots of stuff. So bear that in mind. Making the ironclad makes the Kraken easier, they said, though. So 
and once they are able to get all the shared assets in and done for the ironclad bam they're both to make the kraken much easier and obviously the kraken is a much bigger ship so you can expect the ironclad before the kraken it seems they can also use those expanded assets to develop the kraken's additional assets more just that the more they have the better in their sort of tool set uh, for expanding out the pipeline of ships no word on the price of the ironclad yet this will be revealed with even more info on saturday the 25th of may at drake defense con but i would personally expect it to be around the 450 dollar mark as it's bigger and more armored than a caterpillar but also they mentioned the next sort of step up might be the hull c although the hull c doesn't have as much armor and armament and doesn't have the protected cargo area also you can't really deploy vehicles or other ships from hull c i'm sort of talking myself out of this maybe it's going to be around the same price as the hull c thinking about it yeah maybe closer to 500 dollars then i'm interested to know what you think of that drake ironclad and what you think its price will be is it something that you desperately want to pick up you love drake ships or you love cargo ships and you're thinking this is absolutely awesome or are you like uh eh, not for me or maybe it's one you'll get in game when do you think it will actually be released because it is a concept ship it does sound like maybe it will be released mid next year question mark We'll learn a load more about the Ironclad on Saturday with its price and some extra bits and bobs that probably weren't included in the Inside Star Citizen. But something else I want to talk about now is the Hornet Mark I retirement. So, Invictus launch week 2954 marks the final chance to be able to pledge for the classic Mark I Hornet series. It is getting removed from the RSI website in terms of being able to purchase it and uh, from in-game shops. It's also getting removed from in-game shops. So... Ever since its debut in 2806, the Hornet has risen to excel in a variety of roles, from high-stakes reconnaissance to brutal dogfighting. However, recent escalating threats have pushed us to go further. Cue the Hornet Mark II series, which now proudly leads the line of the UE Navy, while the F-7 Hornet Mark I has enjoyed a long and illustrious service. We are winding down production of this legendary chassis. Invictus Launch Week 2954 will be the final time the Hornet Mark I is available on the civilian market. For those esteemed pilots who have flown the Mark I into countless battles and adventures this marks a unique opportunity to own a piece of history as we bid farewell to this iconic ship it becomes more than just a vessel it becomes a rare collectible a testament to anvil's legacy so why are cig doing this why aren't they selling the hornet mark one still i think that it's because it's a featured ship of squadron 42 and i think that they're going to want to kind of balance it almost separately to the rest of star citizen that's my theory anyway i think the hornet mark ones and potentially some other ships that they might make um version mark twos of will be lightly retired from the game but they'll have them balanced in squadron 42 and then sort of bring them back into the persistent universe that's my theory on that and obviously it allows cig to have these sort of rare and collectible ships in game they're not getting rid of them entirely um cig did say some other stuff so the hornet mark one series will remain flyable and fully supported receiving bug fixes and its planned gold standard passes it will also be eligible for new paints and cosmetics in the future there will be other means to obtain an f 7 mark 1 in the future as well though we're not quite ready to share those plans yet so it might be something that you earn from playing squadron 42 or th there's lots of other ways it could be a reputation based thing with the ue navy owners of the mark 1 series will possess a usable classic vehicle allowing them to showcase a rare piece of anvil's legacy as every pilot knows the f7 series excels in a range of combat scenarios thanks to its role specific variants anvil aerospace can confirm that the mark 2 editions of the F7CM Super Hornet, the S Ghost, and the R Tracker will be introduced in the not too distant future. So, all of the previous versions of the Mark 1s are going to be available as Mark 2s. So, yeah, they are also on sale with a load of limited paints until the end of Fleet Week. Players that had one in their web hanger before they made the announcement will receive a Killian Blue Hornet Mark 1 skin for free. Uh, there were some other clarifications in an FAQ. So, this does not mean the teams will stop supporting these honorable vehicles. To clarify the scope and intention of this sunset of the vehicle, and they answered a few common questions. Will the Mark 1 Hornet still be earnable in game? Yes, the Mark 1 Hornets will stop being available for pledge and purchase slash rental in game in an upcoming patch. However, there will be ways to earn the Mark 1 Hornet in the future though they're not showing plans of that. Will the Mark 1 Hornet 
bespoke mounts still be earnable in-game? Yes, they will be available in shops, but with uh, limited and reduced supply. And just like the ships, there will be other ways to earn these items in the future that they're sort of planning. Will we have in-game events that allow owners of the Mark 1 variants to get a Mark 2 upgrade for free? While there are no immediate plans to this effect, there may be opportunities to earn upgrades in the future. How will this affect the Mark 1 Hornet's tuning and balancing in-game? All ships available to pledge or not will continue to be tuned according to their role and function in the verse. If I exchange the Mark 1 in my web hanger, can I buy it back later? Yes, you'll be able to buy your pledge back. You can still buy back and apply your existing Mark 1 Hornet upgrades as well, and you can still upgrade your Mark 1 Hornet to other vehicles. I just found that really interesting. It is uh, a bit of a weird thing that they are retiring that ship, but there probably are a lot of reasons. And as I said, Squadron 42 might be uh, part of that. Also, them just trying to sell the new version of the Hornet might be part of that. They have always said that they wanted different versions of the same ship series in game as they sort of um, upgrade to Mark 2s, Mark 3s, things like that. I am very interested on your opinion on this though. Do you think it's a great idea? Do you hate it? What do you think the reasoning behind that is? It's very possible that you get these sort of ships from doing military service or getting a good reputation with the UEE. Then you can go, yeah, I can buy some old military surplus. But whatever your thoughts or questions on the Ironclad or the sort of retirement of the Mark I Hornets, please tell me in the comments below. Something else that you should do down below is check out Beam. Beam gives you eye tracking using your webcam. It's a cheaper alternative to some other solutions and you might like it. Although it could be some sort of gateway drug into then buying yourself a load of Toby eye trackers around you, so you're like a spider. Use the link down below and the code Star Citizen to get 20% off. Something else you might want to consider as well, NordVPN, best darn VPN that I've ever did talk about in today's video. It, it gives you better accessibility, privacy and security on the interwebs. Just use the links below or go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. I use my NordVPN through a little extension on Chrome. And you could too, or you could use it one of the many other ways. It even works on your other devices as well. I mean, not all of them, that would be mad. Like it doesn't work on my toothbrush. I've gone off on a weird tangent. May in Star Citizen is about fleets and Fleet Week and flying with friends and we've partnered up with Lunar Wolves, a Star Citizen org, to give away a fleet of ships. Commenting on any of my videos during the month not only gets you a chance to win a Spirit C1, but also a Constellation Andromeda, a Vanguard Sentinel and a Corsair, courtesy of Lunar Wolves. They'll each be going out to a different winner chosen randomly from the video comments. But wait, there is more. Sign up to the Lunar Wolves recruitment page link down below for a chance for even more ships including an RSI Polaris with lifetime insurance and a Hornet F7C Mark II. Winners of those will be selected randomly from eligible org signups. Lunar Wolves welcome all that share their passion for adventure and love of Star Citizen. You can learn more about them on their org page or at lunarwolves.org. If you would like to further support our channel, please like, subscribe, comment, share these videos. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, and I would love you to, please consider becoming a Patreon or clicking that join button under my videos. It goes a huge way in allowing us to make daily content and keep the channel going. You'll get some exclusive content from that as well. Any time Zinn and I can actually put it out, as well as help evolve the channel with polls and suggestions and that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for watching to the end and have a great May. It's going to be a good one.